When high school student Hanai Ishia unknowingly steps into the world of yokai, he finds himself possessed by a fuzzy parasitic spirit that drains his energy and turns his daily life into chaos. Desperate for a solution, Hanai stumbles upon the enigmatic Abino Haruitsuki, master of the Mononokian, a yokai exorcist with a heart as cold as ice and a debt collector's knack for squeezing every yen. Together, they embark on a journey to return lost spirits to the underworld. But Hanai soon discovers that yokai aren't just monsters. They're lonely, misunderstood beings yearning for connection. Balancing school, his new job, and a grumpy employer, Hanai must navigate a strange and dangerous world where compassion might just be his greatest power. Can he survive his eccentric boss, endless debt, and the emotional weight of helping both humans and yokai find peace? The anime begins with a young man struggling to walk as he heads to school, walking with a stick like my ancient great-grandfather. He struggles but manages to get to the school gate before he collapses. Who would have thought he had attracted a good-looking demon of the underworld, called a yokai? The fuzzy furry yokai has taken a liking to him, and the evening before school resumes, his florist mom asks him to get some stuff from the market. On his way back and as blind as a cross-eyed bat, he steps on what he thought was a stuffed animal. Being a good person, he decided to get the stuffed animal away from the road and keep it safely by the side of the road for its owner to pick it up. Before he could leave, the stuffed animal, which was a yokai, jumped on him. Hanai could feel the added weight and realized immediately that it was a living creature. He gets over the shock and tries to get the animal off him, but the animal holds on to him and refuses to leave him. After several tries, he goes home looking terribly and his mom asks why his face looks like there is poop on it. Hanai tells his mom that he has an annoying creature stuck on him and asks her to help him get the animal off him, but she cannot see the animal and wonders what has gotten into him. He is shocked that she can't see the animal. The next day as he heads to school, he collapses before he gets to the gate. He wakes up at the nurse's office with the parasitic vampire yokai still with him. He tries to go back to class and the nurse tells him that school is over, making him sad that he has missed his first day of school. On his way home, the naive Hanai gets pissed off with the yokai's disturbance and scolds it, but this sucker of his strength would only look at him without saying anything. Unfortunately for Hanai, no one else can see the yokai, and people begin to think that he belongs in Arkham Asylum. The next day, the same thing happens, but this time he manages to get inside the gate before collapsing. The rest of the students wonder if he is okay. On and on his misery continues until the fifth day, and his mom worries about his unhealthy look. She thinks he is suffering from anemia and tries to reassure him saying that she had a similar experience. Hanai assures his mom that he is okay but collapses several times on his way to school. He struggled to stand and keep moving as his mom had encouraged him, and was at the door of his classroom when he passed out again. Hanai would get a Guinness record for most faints in a day if there was one. He regains consciousness as usual at the nurse's office and complains about his life and how the yokai sucks him as it is getting bigger. Keep your mind clean, folks. He steps out of the office on his way to class and determines to get rid of the creature. Hanai struggles with the stubborn yokai and forces it off his back. Happy that the creature is off him, he kicks the creature like a ball, but the creature bounces on the floor before jumping on him again, throwing him off. Hanai falls back using the wall to support himself from falling and tears off a poster on the wall. Sad that he is destroying school property, he saw that the poster he ripped off was covering another, and when he looked at the exposed poster, he saw a job opening for an exorcist. Hanai believes the exorcist would help him with the yokai, he decides to reach out to the exorcist, and calls the number of the exorcist, Haruitsuki Abeno, picks up the call and is shocked that someone had seen the poster. Abeno tells Hanai to come to see him immediately. Hanai wonders how he would see Abeno immediately, and the exorcist tells him to open the nurse's door, which surprised Hanai. Abeno is probably Flash or something. Hanai opens the door and is amazed to see a young blonde man in a kimono waiting for him. Abeno invites him in, but Hanai pauses a bit, wondering how the nurse's door is connected to Abeno's place. Hanai enters the room and the pesty yokai becomes small. Abeno prepares tea for Hanai and introduces himself as the master of the Mononokian. He then asks Hanai when he would begin work. Hanai, who had come to get rid of a pest, tells Abeno that he needs help and not a job. He explains that he has been possessed by a yokai and believes that Abeno could help him out of his yokai predicament. Abeno gets pissed that the idiot had not come for the job and sends him out, but Hanai, who is tired of the yokai messing his life up, pleads with him. Abeno tells Hanai that he has a long line of customers and that Hanai would have to get his exorcism done in 10 days. Hanai sees himself dead as a doornail before he has the yokai taken off him. Abeno advises him to do it himself thinking that because Hanai could see yokai, he has the power to exercise yokai. I wouldn't look down on our protagonist, Ashia Hanai. 
he may just discover the power to do so in no time. Hanai decides to wait out his turn, hoping he is still alive when Abeno is ready for him. Abeno asks Hanai his name, and on recognizing his surname, Abeno decides to help him. He tells Hanai to go outside, and he will follow, but Hanai turns and does not see any door. Then Abeno tells him to look at his feet. Hanai sees a little door and goes out to find himself on the roof of the school. As he steps out of the room, the yokai grows again, growing so big it overwhelms Hanai, and he begins to hit the yokai, while Abeno watches him with disgust on his face. Abeno blows a beach ball until it is pumped full of air. Hanai looks on, wondering what is going to happen, and then he begins to insult Abeno like a sailor's wife. Abeno told Hanai that he does the exorcism for the sake of the yokai and not for the sake of humans as he hates humans. Abeno then invites the yokai to play with him. The yokai gets off Hanai and begins to play with the more serious-minded Abeno. Abeno then tells Hanai about the yokai, which are mostly unseen by humans making them lonely. Sometimes a pet would die and then turn into a yokai they would become sad that they are no longer shown the love they received when they were alive. Abeno explained that the yokai that attached itself to him was happy that Hanai did not ignore it like most other humans did, but showed it care and affection. The annoying parasite yokai had stuck to him because of that. Hanai feels bad upon hearing about the loneliness and helplessness of the yokai, and he regrets his actions. He becomes more emotional than a bride on her wedding day, and asks Abeno if there is anything he can do to help the yokai. Abeno passed him the ball and told him to play with the yokai. The yokai was too big for exorcism, and to reduce his size for the exorcism, Hanai would have to satisfy the yokai's desires. Hanai began playing with the yokai, which became smaller after five hours. Hanai, already tired from the long hours of play, pleads with Abeno to carry out the exorcism ASAP. Abeno walks to the wall and speaks to it, giving his name and title as the master of the Mononokian, then summons up a portal to the underworld. A door suddenly appears on the wall, and Abeno tells him to send the yokai over, but the emotional Hanai who has begun to feel empathy for the yokai is reluctant to let it go, and he apologizes for his actions. Abeno shouts that he freed the innocent yokai as he becomes friendly toward the yokai, and the yokai thanks Hanai, using telepathy like Professor X. The yokai goes to Abeno, who encourages it to go into the door to the world of the yokai as it would have a lot of friends in the underworld to play with. Abeno closes the door to the underworld, and the foolish Hanai begins to apologize for his attitude and thank him for his service. Abeno tells Hanai not to thank him, but to pay a million yen for his service. I am starting to think Abeno is more of a lone shark than a yokai exorcist. Hanai is shocked at the amount and reminds him that he is only a student but Abeno would not hear of it, and told him that he will work off his debt. Hanai refuses, but Abeno threatens to send a nasty yokai to collect his debt. The next day, Hanai's mom gives him a bouquet to give to his homeroom teacher for missing his first week. The teacher takes him to his class and introduces him to his colleagues who are shocked to find that Hanai is a guy. I am shocked the idiot is a guy. He acts like Marie Antoinette, and they scold their teacher for tricking them. Hanai goes to his seat and turns to introduce himself to a student sleeping on his seat behind him and is shocked to find that it is Abeno Haruitsuki, the master of the Mononokian. Abeno was sleeping in class, probably because he gets tired after his side hustles as the master of the Mononokian. Abeno wakes. Hanai scolds Abeno for hiding his identity from him when Abeno feels a strange aura in the air. Then they notice a yokai. Hanai asks if Abeno intends to exercise the yokai, but Abeno says that he would no longer have a business if he exercised every stray yokai. He orders Hanai to ignore any yokai unless he tells him to. Abeno asks Hanai to go get him food, and Hanai wonders if Abeno wants to use him as a slave. Hanai goes to get the food for Abeno, and joins a queue when he hears a shout. A girl collapses crying about a pain in her leg. Hanai sees that she has been attacked by a yokai, the very same kind he and Abeno saw in the classroom. He desires to help her because he is such a softy but has conflicting thoughts because Abeno had told him to avoid any yokai unless he tells him otherwise. Hanai is unable to ignore her pain and removes the yokai from her leg, but no one knows what he has done. They believe he had used a healing power to save the girl, and they all praise him, calling him an esper. Hanai, whose empathy is bigger than his brain, walks off with the yokai, but suddenly he feels a difference in the air a presence stronger than he had felt with the fuzzy yokai that possessed him. The annoying little yokai suddenly starts screeching like a banshee, but he is the only one who can hear it. The loud screech caused many more of the yokai to come running towards him. Still in class, Abeno wonders what was taking his idiot employee so long, when he hears a scream outside the classroom and goes out to see Hanai struggling with all of the little yokai. Some girls in class watch in confusion as Hanai struggles to get to class. The annoying employer who senses as solid as a matchstick castle, asks his boss Abeno to help him but his serious and human-hating employer scolds him for disobeying his orders. Abeno agrees to help him, then walks to the door where some students are watching and sends them into the class, before summoning the Mononokian. Abeno then drags Hanai, telling him to get a part of his body through the door. 
The dumb employee of the year, Hanai, manages to get his hands through the door, and the little yokai scampers away. The idiotic employee, Hanai, enters and is surprised to see that it is the tea room where he first met Abeno. The naive idiot is happy that the yokai cannot enter the Mononokian, but the strict Abeno tells him that it is far from over. Hanai pleads with Abeno to send the yokai to the underworld, but Abeno is not strong enough to open the portal more than twice a day. Hanai becomes sad that he will have to run from the yokai for the rest of his life, but Abeno assures him that there is hope. The idiot realizes that Abeno wants to exercise the boss of the screeching yokai, which would also send the little ones to the underworld, instead of draining his life force to exercise them one after the other, and that he will go find out what the boss of the little yokai wants so that they can satisfy its desires. I tell you again, keep your mind clean and send them on their way. Abeno tells Hanai that he will add this new service to his debt, but Hanai is worried about Abeno since they are in the same grade and both look like they would run from a rat. He tells the experienced master of the Mononokian that he would like to join him in dealing with the yokai. Hanai convinces Abeno that he could act as bait for the yokai while Abeno finds the boss, but he is only doing this because he feels responsible for the situation and doesn't want Abeno to die. Abeno is surprised that the idiot is concerned for him, then he agrees to use Hanai as bait. After agreeing to be used as bait, Hanai becomes a scaredy cat and cannot step out. Abeno gives him a totem that can help him, then kicks him out the door without pity. The yokai wasted no time and carried Hanai off immediately like he was going to be sacrificed. Abeno followed them, which was when he saw that more of the yokai were waiting for him too. They jump on him and he loses consciousness. Hanai wakes up to see the boss of the screeching yokai talking to him. He panics and looks around for Abeno. He sees that Abeno has also been caught and scolds his boss for getting caught by the yokai. He shows Abeno the boss of the little ones wanting his boss to deal with their boss. The boss asks them if they know the yokai who is the master of the Mononokian. Hanai is surprised that a yokai is the master of the Mononokian, but Abeno identifies himself, telling the yokai that he is the master. Abeno opens the portal to prove his point, and the boss of the screeching monsters believes him. The boss who is ashamed to ask a puny and foolish human for help, then requests that Abeno send him and his little ones to the underworld. The strict but yokai-loving Abeno agrees, and then together with a fearful Hanai carries the little ones to the portal. Hanai asks if all the little ones were in, then he asks how they were going to make the boss smaller so that it could fit through the portal. The boss explains that he has grown roots in the world and cannot leave. Abeno explains to his idiotic novice that a parasite shrub has anchored the boss of the screeching yokai to the world. The boss tells Hanai that he is glad that the little ones are safe and he can now die in peace, but Hanai will not hear of it and calls him a coward for trying to give up. Hanai assures the boss that he will make sure he goes to the underworld with his little ones. Abeno tries to dissuade his foolish assistant who does not understand anything about the world of the yokai, but Hanai who can be as stubborn as a mule sometimes would not be convinced otherwise. He tries to reason with the boss yokai who had given up hope, although he wished to go to the underworld to keep nurturing his little ones till they are grown enough to take care of themselves. The master of the Mononoke and Abeno asks the boss if he is willing to do anything to be with his little ones, and the boss says that he is. Abeno collected the totem he had given Hanai, and from it took a pill that could help the boss free itself from the parasite shrub for a short time at the cost of extreme pain. When Hanai asks why he has not mentioned it before, Abeno replies that the pill causes extreme pain to the extent of death and asks if the boss is willing. The boss agrees and Abeno gives him the pill. After several agonizing minutes with the boss screaming in pain, he becomes small and is no longer attached to the parasite shrub. The master of the Mononokian and his foolish but empathetic assistant Hanai wait for the boss to wake up, which he eventually does, to Hanai's joy that Hanai teases the boss like he was his lost pet. Abeno opens the portal door and they see that the little ones have waited for the boss to join them. The boss thanks both of them as he joins his little ones, but Abeno does not want to take credit and apologizes for not helping him enough. Hanai also apologizes for scolding the boss, but the boss corrects him and thanks him for speaking sense to him. Abeno then tells the boss to get to an apothecary in the underworld called Kiyakudo, and then they all say their farewells. After the portal disappears, Hanai announces that he feels relieved with the entire thing that happened. He is unhappy that he did not help much, but Abeno assures him that he did more than he thought. His strict master told him that his unrelenting spirit was what helped them send the yokai home. As Abeno was speaking, he suddenly collapsed and Hanai had to wake him. Abeno managed to get up and summon the Mononokian. After resting a while, Abeno asks Hanai about his house, and when he describes it, Abeno tells the Mononokian to take them to the front door of Hanai's house. Suddenly a bell rang and a hanging scroll displayed a text. Suddenly Hanai saw the door to his house. Wanting to know more, he said hello, and the Mononokian replied through the hanging scroll, shocking Hanai. It was a strange world he had entered, even scrolls talk. Abeno explains that the Mononokian is a yokai, 
The Mononokian rings the bell again before displaying its thought on the hanging scroll, welcoming Hanai. Abeno tells Hanai to leave, but the Mononokian asks him if Abeno had opened the portal to the underworld twice that day, which was why he looked drained like he was carrying Sauron's ring of power. Hanai recalls something and asks the Mononokian about its previous owner, and when the Mononokian tries to answer Hanai, Abeno scolds him and tells him to go home. Hanai opens the door to see his mom, who is worried about him. Later, his mom asks about his well-being while they have dinner, and he assures her that he is okay but spaces out, making his mom wonder if he is truly alright and if school was tough on him. The next day, Abeno did not show up at school, and when Hanai got ready to go home, two of his classmates Saga and Fushi showed up. They were worried about him missing some classes and gave him notes from the classes he missed. The gesture overwhelms Hanai, who is glad to be making friends, and decides to walk home with them. Hanai walks ahead of the boys and opens a door only to see his sad-faced employer, Abeno, on the other side. He closes the door immediately and excuses himself from his new friends. Hanai then enters the room to meet Abeno. He scolds Abeno for not notifying him of his absence from school and for popping up anywhere he likes. Abeno points him to their client who Hanai had not noticed and introduces the client to a yokai who is named Mitsuchigura. Abeno gives him a book for little kids and tells him to read which makes him cry so much. Abeno tells the client that the Childish and Naivi Hanai would do the job. Mitsuchigura explains his situation to him. He has three masks with which he uses to express his emotions. A weeping mask, a rage mask, and a laughing mask. He tells Hanai that he has lost his laughing mask and that he is to help him retrieve it before the person who is with the mask dies from laughter. The only way to get the laughing mask is to show a tearful face before it, and Hanai, who is good at crying like a child lost in the jungle, should get it, which is why Abeno believes he could handle the retrieval. The Mononokian sends them to a temple where Hanai would find the man with the mask. Hanai steps out and asks Abeno if he is not joining him, but Abeno tells him the job is for little kids like Hanai and he should be able to handle it. Hanai does not like how Abeno treats him like a little child. Hanai hears someone calling out to him. He turns and sees a pair of eyes in the bushes and fears it is a yokai, but a girl steps out of the bush and scolds him for calling her a yokai. She questions his sudden appearance at her shed and asks if he is a thief. He tells her that he is looking for the mask, but she has not seen anything like it. As they talk, Hane hears someone laughing hard like the patients of Arkham Asylum, and she tells him that it is her father. Hane explains the situation to the girl, but she does not believe him. Hane had thought she was a little kid because she is very short and is shocked to find that she is the same age as he is. She tells him to leave or she calls the cops, but he convinces her to let him help her dad. She agrees and tells him her name is Zenko. She took him to see her father. Hanai sees a mark on Zenko's crazy laughing father, which he had seen on Mitsuchigura, and confirms that the man is possessed by the laughing yokai. Zenko's father makes some crazy comments wondering if Hanai is dating his daughter, but Zenko and Hanai assure him that Hanai is only there to help him to which Zenko's father pleads that he do so quickly, as his illness does not allow him to say his prayers anymore. Zenko watches helplessly and asks if Hanai can help her dad but she is still worried that he will be unable to do anything. Mitsuchigura and Abeno discuss Hanai, and the yokai comments on Abeno, constantly worrying about Hanai. Meanwhile, Hanai is finding it difficult to make a tearful face while listening to the man laugh. Zenko pulls out some plants in the yard of the temple as she waits for Hanai to help her father, and then she recalls a conversation with her dad where he had refused to allow her to take over the temple from him. She had accepted his decision, although she was not happy about it. She believed he had rejected her proposal because she was a girl. She sees the naive and gentle Hanai still struggling, which of course is normal for the naive boy child, and invites him to take a break. He agrees and sees that the weed she is pulling out is daffodils, and he scolds her for it. Hanai made sure they replanted the daffodils she had pulled out, and she complimented his knowledge of the plant. He explained that his mother is a florist. Zenko asks about his intentions about taking over the flower shop from her, and he replies that his mother had told him that it was her dream and that he should chase his dream. He confessed that although he had felt obligated to run the shop as the eldest son, his mother had made him rethink so that he may choose his path. Zenko explains her plight about running the temple and her father's rejection. She tells him that her father probably rejected her because she is a girl, and Hine wonders if that was her father's reason. He told her that her father may have felt it was not her obligation to take over from him and wanted her to chase her dream as his mom had done for him. The speech makes Zenko weep and Hanai tries to console her. Her father wakes up and laughingly asks why she is crying but as he raises his head to look at her, he becomes unpossessed 
and Hanai can see the mask on his face. Hanai goes over and removes it from the man's face, glad to have succeeded. But Zenko's father grabs him and asks why he made Zenko cry, as he tries to hit him. Abeno appears suddenly, and stops him. Abeno assures him that he would punish Hanai, and scolds Hanai for his actions, although the yokai appreciates him from the Mononokian, which had appeared out of the man's closet. Hanai goes to grab his stuff while Abeno talks with Zenko, and then apologizes to her for making her cry, before they close the door to the amazement of both Zenko and her father, who see them entering his closet. Zenko then asked her dad if he had rejected her because she was a girl, turns out that he had not, and that made her happy. Mitsuchigura the yokai paid Abeno for his service, and Abeno orders the Mononokian to open a door to the underworld. Hanai, as a curious four-year-old goes to the door and peers inside, Abeno cautions him as if he could fall into the underworld. The yokai tells Abino that he noticed that Abino is glad that Hanai is back safely, and tells him to be careful with Hanai, as he is like a walking time bomb. The strict Abino and the childish Hanai are on the roof, and Hanai comments on how he is missing Fuzzball, and would love to pet the yokai again. He recalls his experience with the Fuzzball, and wishes all yokai were soft and cushy like that. Abino does not share his enthusiasm, he tells Hanai to shut up, and pays him for his last job, while Hanai continues to wish he could see Fuzzy again. Later at the Mononokian, Abino announces that he will be unavailable, for a while and Hanai asks about it. The Mononokian snitches which annoys Abino. Hanai is surprised that Abino is going to the underworld and Mononokian tells the impulsive idiot that he can go too. Abino is not happy about it, but Mononokian is determined that Hanai should go. Hanai, whose brain is in a covered jar for dead creatures, also shows that he is curious about the underworld and would love to go since he is stuck working for Abino. Abino eventually agrees, and the Mononokian congratulates Hanai but teases him a bit about how scary yokai can be. Hanai wonders what his excursion to the underworld would be like, and also worries about Abeno, who is always asleep in class. Just then a shutter sound scares him, and he sees Fushi taking pictures of him. Fushi shows him some of his work, and then an injury he sustained in taking the picture of a cat to which Hanai shows concern, and directs him to get it treated. Fushi is not surprised that Hanai is very much acquainted with the nurse's office, and calls him a nickname their classmate had given him. Hanai gets to the roof and sees Abeno waiting for him. He comments on Abeno's new outfit, and Abeno gives him a female cloak that he is to wear, if he would be going with him to the underworld. Truly befitting of a naive and impulsive, five-year sorry, fifteen-year-old boy. Hanai rejects the cloak, but Abeno insists that he wear it, and also gives him a message from the Mononokian a guideline or rules to follow to survive his first day in the underworld. Abeno summons up the portal to the underworld, but Hanai recalled that the Mononokian had opened up a door for Mitsuchigura, and Abeno explained how that worked to him. He lets the idiot employee know that he is the reason he is opening a portal to the underworld, because if it was just him as the master of the Mononokian, he would have used one of the other doors, but since Hanai is just a regular human, he had to open the portal. Abeno also reminded him that he would be opening the portal twice, using up his quota for the day, and then gave him a final rule, which was to hide the fact that he is a human from the yokai. They go in through the dark portal, and Hanai feels motivated because he would see Fuzzy again. As they move, he feels sick, but does not tell Abeno, as he had been instructed in the message from the Mononokian. Nokian. Abeno notices that he looks sick and asks about it, but Hanai tries to assure him that he is okay. They get outside into a bright and clean society, and Hanai feels relieved that the yokai are not as creepy as he thought. He mistakenly mentions that he is over his sickness, which annoys Abino that he had lied about being sick. They get to Kiyakudo where Abino has a business to attend to. They exchange pleasantries and Hanai is surprised to see that Kura the yokai owner of the shop and Shizuku her assistant look human. Kura commends Shizuku for trying to pass off as human, although she is unable to get rid of her newt's tail, telling her that she likes the tail. Shizuku is happy that Kura is okay with her tail, and announces that she will keep the tail. Her behavior makes Abeno observe that she is still in love with her master Kura. Abeno tells them what he wants, but Kura scolds him for rushing like the Russians. Kura has a weird fantasy of using bodies to make medicine, and starts to examine Abeno, wishing that she can have a part of his body for her medicine, but this action makes Shizuku jealous. Hanai watches in shock, thinking Kura is just a regular pervert. Then she begins to say things that you hear from Hannibal Lecter, the cannibal doctor. Kura notices him and asks Abeno about him. They are introduced, and she transfers her weird fantasy to him, requesting that he give her a part of his body so she can use it for medicine. Abeno impatiently asks for the medicine he came for, and Kura explains that they are out of stock, telling him that the medicine has been exhausted as they had to help the yokai that he had sent to them the yokai who had suffered from the parasite shrub. Abeno is shocked that the medicine is finished, and complains, but Shizuku defends Kora and blames Abeno for sending the yokai to them. Hanai is happy that the screeching yokai boss is safe, and Kora announced that she had put her service to the yokai on the Mononokian's tab, to which Abeno did not object. 
He assured them that their actions were acceptable to him, but that they would have to make new medicine for him. They assured him that they would be done with the medicine in no time, and told him to hang around and help her with a little task before the medicine was ready. As they help her inventory her goods, Hanai the everly impulsive child shows a willingness to help, but is grossed out by the creepiness of her ingredients. Abeno observes that one of the inventories is wrong, and goes to find Shizuku to ask her about it. Hanai kept working, but then he noticed a creature run past outside the store, and he thought he had seen Fuzzy. He chases after it and notices a blood-like stain on the ground. He assumes that Fuzzy is injured and runs to catch it. When he catches it, he sees that it is not Fuzzy, and what he thought was blood was fruit juice. The creature drops the fruit and runs off. He picks it up in wonder, and suddenly he hears a yokai running towards him. The yokai runs past him, but then turns back and holds him accusing him of stealing from him. The yokai accuses Hanai of changing his form to get away. Hanai is amazed that he is accused of stealing, and tries to explain that he is not a thief, but the yokai would not hear from him. The yokai then notices the Mononokian's crest on his cloak and asks about it. Hanai explains that he works in the Mononokian, and the yokai become friendly in the hope that they settle everything with some money. Hanai brings out his money, and the yokai gets angry that he is offering little money. Just then, some whispers from gossiping yokai in the street make the yokai think he is lying. The yokai tries to cut him, but he dodges, and the yokai kicks him to the ground. The yokai tries to cut him again, but is attacked by Fuzzy, who had come to help Hanai. At the shop, Shizuku and Abeno search for the inventory list before Kura comes and shows it to them. Abeno is not happy that Hanai has gone off again and steps out to look for him. Hanai is glad to see Fuzzy, but the yokai is still angry about his stolen fruit. The yokai threatens Fuzzy, and Hanai surrenders himself so that Fuzzy can escape. Fuzzy is angry and launches himself at the other yokai, who simply grabs him and flings him towards a window. Fuzzy collapses and bleeds from an injury. Hanai sees Fuzzy bleeding and suddenly his aura changes, and then he turns on the man scolding him for his actions. Just then, Abeno appears, angry that Hanai had caused trouble. Abeno advances to teach his childish employee a lesson, but Shizuku holds him back because of his position as the master of the Mononokian. The yokai is scared that Abeno has appeared and wonders what could happen to him, even as Abino offers his apology and restitution for Hanai's mistakes. Hanai helps Fuzzy and defends his actions, but Abeno scolds him. The yokai expresses his fear of Abeno, as the rumor of Abeno killing the previous master of the Mononokian and becoming the master of the Mononokian spreads throughout the underworld. The man runs off when Abeno threatens to report the incident to the authorities, but Hanai protests. Shizuku reminds him that saving Fuzzy is more important, and he agrees. Kura awaits the return of the Mononokian staff and her assistant, before she gets a call from the legislature. She told him about Abeno and his stupid new employee, Hanai. The legislator then requests that she deliver a message to Abeno. Hanai and the rest get back to the Kiyakudo, and Kuora helps them treat Fuzzy while he explains the situation to Abeno. Shizuku brings Fuzzy out, who is happy to reunite with Hanai. Abeno looks at Hanai. While Fuzzy rubs against him, this makes Hanai tell Abeno that he can also pet Fuzzy if he wants. Kura remembers the message from the legislator and passes it on to Abeno. She also tells Shizuku that the legislator who is her brother requests that she come home but Shizuku complains that she had seen him the day before. Abeno is unhappy that the legislator had requested his presence regarding Hanai, and complained that the legislator had been the one who made it a rule to allow the master of the Mononokian to hire an employee. He eventually agrees to go see him with Hanai, but Hanai wonders if he should be worried about his safety, to which Shizuku and Abeno assure him that it is fine. Abeno tells Kura to pack his medicine and to add a healing salve for Fuzzy, then tells Hanai that he has to take care of Fuzzy until he is completely healed. Hanai gladly accepts and Korra gives them the medicine they came for. Shizuku gives them their farewell. Abeno and Hanai head to meet up with the legislator, while Abeno explains the system of the underworld to Hanai, and tells him that as the master of the Mononokian, he is above all rules of the underworld, except one imposed by the legislator. Hanai asks about the legislator worried that he might be dangerous, but Abeno calms his fears and shares the habits of the legislator, which makes Hanai wonder why someone with such questionable character should judge him worthy of working at the Mononokian. The legislator is a drunk gambler and a pervert. Hanai is afraid that the legislator will fire him, but Abeno assures him that he would not let it happen, making Hanai ask if Abeno cares for him. They reach the legislator who welcomes them. He berates Abeno for choosing Hanai and advises Hanai to quit. Abeno argues his decision, but the legislator is not convinced and adds that Hanai is a human, making him unsuited for the job. 
Panai tries to defend himself by announcing that he is a yokai, but Abeno concurs with the legislator. Hanai scolds Abeno for throwing him under the bus and insults him, and they argue hotly. The legislator interrupts them and asks Hanai his name. Abeno tells the legislator that he has his reasons for hiring Hanai and that he is confident he would be able to handle the jobs. He adds that unless the legislator gives him a rule where he has to fire Hanai, he would not for him. The legislator then asks Hanai his thoughts about the job. He asks if Hanai can give his all in service to the yokai and Hanai thinks deeply about it. Our stupid protagonist becomes so serious here that he thinks about how his life has changed since meeting the yokai, then tells the legislator that his question is out of depth and cannot be answered. Abeno tells him to stop, but he defends his point and the legislator questions his capability to work towards the greater good, and Hanai defends himself. Hanai announces that his goal has been to help any yokai in need of his help, but will not be able to do that if the legislator fires him. The legislator talks about the portal that Abino has to open to come into the underworld, and Abino reminds him that he gave the rule to come into the underworld through the underworld portal. The legislator then gave a new rule allowing Abeno and Hanai to use the Mononokian to come to the underworld, thus giving his approval for hiring Hanai. Hanai thanks him and mentions that he had feared dying if the legislator found out about him, but Abeno assures him that it is right for the legislator to know. The legislator then lists all of the yokai that know that Abeno is a human, although Shizuku does not know about it and commands Hanai to keep the secret. Just then, Fuzzy jumps from Hanai's shoulder and goes to the legislator, communicates with him, and jumps on the legislator, but Hanai Hanai quickly retrieves him. The legislator announces that Fuzzy wants to work for Abeno too, and hires him. But Abeno is not happy that the legislator hired Fuzzy without asking him. Abeno summons a door that opens into the Mononokian and tells Hanai to go in. The legislator invites Hanai to come around any time for a drink, but Hanai tells him that he is not of age. The legislator apologizes to Abeno for hiring Fuzzy without discussing it with him, and shares his thoughts on why Abeno does not want yokai employees. It has to do with something that happened in the past, although it wasn't Abeno's fault. Abeno tells him to shut up and goes in through the door, but not before saying his farewells. Hanai asks his sour-natured and emotionless boss Abeno about his attitude, and he says that the legislator pisses him off. The Mononokian commented on their late return, and Abeno agreed. The Mononokian mentioned that following the rules would have kept Hanai safe, and Hanai apologized for breaking all of the rules. The Mononokian wants to know if Hanai now hates the underworld, but Hanai does not. He agrees that the mistakes were his for not following the guidelines he gave him, but he also had good experiences there, which he shared with the Mononokian. The next day, our dull-brained Hanai waits with anticipation for class to end, so that he and Abino can go deal with a job they got. A yokai had requested their help to find a wedding ring an old woman had lost while taking a walk. They are to find the ring and return it to the old woman. Some minutes after class ends, the homeroom teacher is still saying some irrelevant things, like a president with dementia, Hanai is looking so uncomfortable, and Abeno was giving the teacher the look Deadshot would give his targets. Fushi summoned up courage and told the teacher to stop talking, which he did, and dismissed the class. Saga commended Fushi for his actions, and he explained that he had noticed both Abeno and Hanai's faces, and believed Hanai to be in great discomfort. Meanwhile, Abeno had commanded the Mononokian to take them to the creek where the ring was lost. They had arrived some minutes late, and Abeno, sensing the presence of the yokai that hired them, apologized. The yokai comes out and berates them for coming late before he he is introduced to Hanai and Fuzzy. They prepare to begin the search for the ring, and Manjiro the yokai pushes them to search harder for the ring. Abeno tells him that they always see their job through to the end, and Hanai supports him, assuring Manjiro that they will find the ring. Hanai assures even Abeno, who is doubting him, that he is a walking metal detector, and that he would find the ring. Abeno tells Fuzzy, whom he calls Hairball, to search on the bank of the creek. While he and Hanai search in the water, they all search with Manjiro, breathing down on their necks to find it as soon as possible. Abeno notices Manjiro's discomfort, and tells him to go back to where the old lady is. But Manjiro does not listen. He warns him that if he notices that he is in danger, he will exercise him immediately. Hanai shouts that he has found the ring, and Manjiro confirms that it is the ring, making Abeno wonder if his idiot employee had found the ring based on instinct alone. Manjiro wraps himself around Hanai to appreciate his help in finding the ring, and they all try to figure out the best way to get the ring to the old woman. Hanai believes showing up before the old lady would scare her and assume they stole the ring. Abeno, who is not in the least bit interested in the happiness of humans like Thanos, suggests putting the ring in the woman's mailbox and being done with it. Hanai does not agree with Abeno's plan and says that they should make it such that Manjiro is happy with the outcome before he goes to the underworld, and suggests that they tell the old woman about Manjiro. 
He tries to explain his reason to Abino, who is not interested in it at all, and also explains the delicacy of the yokai situation to Hanai. He tells him that humans are not interested in knowing about the yokai as they would not understand it. He mentions that she may become creeped out and refuse to take the ring from them, therefore making their entire mission a failure, and Manjiro going to the underworld disappointed. Hanai agrees to go along with Abeno's plan, and apologizes to Manjiro for giving him hope. Manjiro strikes Hanai in the head to tell him that he is not offended by his actions, but that if not telling her about him would make sure the ring gets on her finger, then that is what they would do. Just then, Fuzzy jumps towards Abeno, showing that he is in support of Abeno's plan of just dropping the ring off, and then they set off towards the old woman's house. After walking for several minutes, they arrive at the place, and Abeno, who is quite lazy in mundane matters, complains about the distance. Manjiro then takes them to the back of the woman's house where they see her mailbox. Hanai goes to put the ring in the mailbox, but hesitates and just stands looking at the ring and thinking about how to make the woman aware of Manjiro. Suddenly, the woman shows up, startling all of them, and Hanai drops the ring in panic. The woman grabs Abeno and then Hanai questions their presence in her house. Hanai shows her the ring which she recognizes and asks how they got it. Abeno shakes her off and advises Hanai not to say anything. Manjiro also advised that he shake her off, put the ring in the mailbox, and they leave. Abeno reminds Hanai of what he told him about involving humans, and they proceed to talk about the yokai to the confusion of the old woman. The woman tries to figure out what they are both talking about, and suddenly Abeno mentions Manjiro's name, she suddenly becomes surprised to hear the name. Abeno explains that they were sent by Manjiro to give her the ring, but refuses to share more than that. She is shocked and is silent for a while. Hanai, thinking it would be his fault if the woman refuses to collect the ring, tries to convince her but Abeno tells him not to say anything. Fortunately for them, the woman was receptive to their story and was glad that they were sent by Manjiro. She explained that Manjiro was her husband, who had been dead for a long time. The two boys are shocked to find that Manjiro is the husband of the old Old woman, and are still in shock when she thanks them for their actions. Abeno thanks her too while Hanai kneels to place the ring on her finger like it's their wedding day, and then she thanks Manjiro whom she cannot see there. This makes Manjiro so happy he wraps himself around her joyfully. Abeno watches the happy scene and wonders when he begins to stop believing in humanity. He is glad that the entire thing turned out well. The old woman then invites them to dinner and Manjiro insists that they stay. Abeno calls Hanai for them to leave, and suddenly hears a voice behind him. He turns around to check and and sees nothing, then asks Hanai about it, but Hanai does not notice anything. Hanai worries that he is about to receive a lecture from Abeno for his actions after they had sent Manjiro to the underworld, but Abeno shocks him by appreciating his efforts for the day. Hanai cannot comprehend why his strict and morose boss, Abeno, did not scold him. Abeno explained that Hanai had been instrumental in making their mission a success, and he appreciated him. But Hanai asked if Abeno was dying, because it was rare for him to compliment him. The childish Hanai starts laughing because he does not know how to handle the compliment prompting Abeno to slap him and make him stop. Hanai walks down the corridor on his way to class thinking about how his body cannot take as much stress from the many things he is doing and hears his name. He is shocked to see Zenko and asks how she found him. She tells him about his nickname flying around school. She thanked him for helping her dad, but he waved it off, telling her that he was glad to be of help. Just then, Abeno, with his usual enthusiasm of a wet blanket, comes out of the classroom and sees them. They get introduced to each other, and she shows them a mark on her arm. She tells them that others cannot see the mark, and have even gone to the doctor. The boys realize that she has a yokai mark on her. Abeno tells her to look out the window, and she sees a yokai floating in the sky. She told them she was bitten by a dog-like creature, and since then she has been seeing yokai. Suddenly, the yokai appeared on Abeno's shoulders and attacked it immediately, but the yokai jumped to safety and berated him for attacking him. Abeno is worried that he has not sensed the fox at all, and wonders what kind of yokai it is. The yokai starts talking as if he and Abeno are friends, but Abeno cannot recall the yokai. He tries to jug Abeno's memory, but the overly serious Abeno still cannot remember. The yokai is hurt that Abeno can't remember, but tells him that he has come to play with him, as he has been bored lately. The yokai threatens Abeno by punishing Zen through the mark on her hand, so that Abeno would have no choice but to accept his demands. He suggests that they play hide and seek, and would remove the mark if Abeno wins, but did not get any response from Abeno and the others. Hanai, who is so clueless about the ways of the yokai, agrees to play with him as he had been playing the game in middle school. The yokai tell the three of them to find him while he hides from them. Zenko interrupts and tells the yokai that they would be unable to play with him as they have class, and when the yokai throws a tantrum, she suggests they play after school. The yokai agrees to the deal, and Zenko tells him to wait at her house. He turns to leave, but Abeno stops him to ask his name. The yokai tells him to figure it out before he disappears. Abeno and Hanai wonder the motive of the yokai, as it does not seem to seek to go home to the underworld. Hanai was unable to go with Abeno and Zenko immediately after school, because he had to do some stuff for the homeroom 
teacher. On reaching Zenko's house, he tries to reach Abeno to no avail, complaining that it is impossible for him not to worry, and starts calling out their names. Suddenly he feels a touch on his back, and fear grips him, thinking it is a ghost, as the temple is close to a gravesite. He sees that it is only fuzzy and is relieved. Just then, Zenko shows up teasing him about being scared of ghosts, but not of yokai, then leads him to the graveyard where they are playing the game. Hanai sees Abeno walking to a gravestone and touches it, saying that he has found the yokai, which surprises Hanai, when the gravestone turns back into the yokai. The yokai complain that Abeno is getting too good at the game, and announce that they should play one more time. Zenko explained that the yokai had been forcing them to play for a long time promising that the next one would be the last man. She points to Abeno, who is tired from the long game he had been forced to play. The yokai disappears demanding they play one more time, and Hanai asks if Abeno has remembered the yokai. He replies that he is not, but he has figured out some things about him. Hanai asks how he would sense him since the yokai is good at concealing his presence, and Abeno explains that he just feels it at the back of his mind. The ignorant but amiable Hanai is enthusiastic about the game, but is afraid to move around because he is afraid of ghosts and begs Zenko to follow him. Zenko leads him around the cemetery, and suddenly they hear that Abeno has gotten the yokai again, but the yokai demands another round of the game. Hanai focuses and makes Zenko lead him to a gravestone, where he finds Fuzzy hiding. As he tries again, they see Abeno walking up to them. Abeno tells them that he has located the yokai, and suggests that they catch him if they want the game to end. Abeno tells them that catching the yoko will make him listen to them, and Hanai is happy that they found out the name of the yokai. But Zenko corrects him, telling Hanai a yoko is a fox yokai, which was the form the yokai had taken. Hanai admits not knowing about it and Abeno scolds him for his ignorance, before giving them a plan to follow to catch the yokai. Zenko agrees, but Hanai seems to hesitate. He could feel something off in the back of his mind, and when Zenko asks him about it, he taps his boss Abino, saying that he has found him. The fake Abino is surprised that Hanai suspects him of being the yokai, but suddenly transforms into the yokai, sad that they have found him. The yokai is about to disappear again but Hanai holds on to him and calls Abeno to come. Zenko wonders how Hanai figured it out, and he replies that it was the words the yokai used when he pretended to be Abeno. Abeno joins them, and Zenko decides to test Abeno to check if he is the real deal. Abeno passes the test, and the yokai complains that Hanai is no longer interested in playing with him. Hanai corrects him, but he doesn't believe him, and he demands that Hanai should play with him for three days. The demand jolts Abeno's memory as he recalls when he was little, and a yokai had made the same demand of him. He calls the yokai its name, Yahiko, and Yahiko, the fox. Yokai Yokai is suddenly pleased that Abeno finally remembers his name, and then transforms into a little boy. Yahiko tells him that they both have changed, and that it must have been at least 30 years since they last met. But Abeno corrects him, telling him that it was just 8 years ago when he became an employee of the Mononokian. Hanai is shocked to find that Abeno had been exercising yokai since he was 7, and the yokai mentions the previous master of the Mononokian Aoi, a yokai. He then starts teasing and telling him about the rumors that are going around that he killed Aoi, the former master of the Mononokian, so that he can take over the Mononokian, and then he punishes Zenko again. Yahiko suddenly transforms into a giant fox yokai overwhelming Hanai with his aura, and continues teasing Abeno. When Abeno was younger and still had a warmth not like the friendly ghost face he puts up now, he had encountered Yahiko. Abeno suggested that Yahiko go to the underworld, as he would have a lot more people to play with there. Yahiko interpreted it as Abeno rejecting his friendship, but Abeno assured him that was not the case. Hanai tries to help Zenko who is suffering from Yahiko's attack, while Abeno faces off with Yahiko, who continues to tease him about his becoming the master of the Mononokian. Abeno simply placed his palm on Yahiko's nose and showed that he was unfazed by the tease, clearing the air about the rumor. Then he used influence, a power humans can use to control the yokai to force Yahiko to submit to him, making him shrink until he becomes his normal size again. This also saves Zenko, as she returns to normal. Yahiko assures Abeno that he doesn't believe the rumors, but he has to make sure that Abeno is still the same as he was when they first met. He tells him that he is glad that the rumors are false, but Abeno with a scowl that would hurt the mirror asks his intentions if the rumors had been true, but Yahiko does not give a straight answer. Hanai is still concerned about Zenko, and Abeno asks Yahiko to remove the mark he placed on her and to apologize to Zenko which he does, but Abeno tells him it is half-hearted and tells him to do it again. But Zenko comes to his rescue and requests that he help in the temple in instead for a month. Hanai is worried about Yahiko's instability and mentions it. Abeno adds that there are more people for Yahiko in the underworld, and he should consider his proposal of sending him to the underworld. 
Yehiko is unhappy thinking that Abano does not want to play with him anymore, but Abano assures him that he still would play with him, then declares that instead of going to the underworld, he is willing to help at the temple for a whole year, and Abano tells him to be on his best behavior, which would be a tall ask, as Yahiko has the grace of a bull in a china shop. Later as Hanai heads home, passing through the place he first met Fuzzy, he notices something on the ground and has a sense of deja vu. He panicked that he had stepped on another yokai, and the yokai flew up to ask him if he knew about the Mononokian, but as the yokai made his request, he collapsed. Hanai took him to his home and took care of him, and when the yokai woke, he asked who he was, as he was surprised to know that Hanai could see and hear him. Hanai introduced himself, and the yokai demanded that Hanai take him to the Mononokian, but he was too weak to move. Hanai gives him tea and they talk. The yokai introduced himself as Jamatsu, and thanked him for saving him. Komatsu then tells Hanai about a yokai princess Anmo, whom he is trying to help. He shares how the princess like Disney princesses going for things that they aren't supposed to, has always fallen for creatures of the human world, despite the fact they cannot see her, causing her severe torment. Every time the princess gets a heartbreak, she hides up in a shell and grieves. Jamatsu mentions that on previous occasions, she holds up in the shell for a few days, but the last one has been over a month. Plus, the shell is growing larger every day, which was why Jomatsu seeks the master of the Mononokian. Hanai explains that he cannot just go to the Mononokian, but Abeno comes to him. He tries to get Jomatsu to rest for the night, assuring him that he would try to contact Abeno to let him know about the situation. The next day in class, Abeno mentions the yokai that is sitting on Hanai's head, and Hanai tells him about the multiple times he tried to reach him the night before. Jomatsu then speaks to Abeno about his need, but Abeno has a job and would not be free until evening. Hanai is excited that they have got a new job, but Abeno tells him it is only a consultation, and Jomatsu agrees to wait until the evening time. Hanai then asks Jomatsu if it is okay that they go check on the princess while they wait for Abeno to come back from his consultation. Jomatsu agrees and flies away while Abeno asks Hanai if he is certain he wants to go alone. You and I know Hanai, he cannot handle a ghost story, not to mention a real ghost yokai. Hanai runs after Jomatsu in the street and they head towards the princess, talking with deep conviction about helping the princess. Hanai stops and asks Jomatsu if he has feelings for the princess, and Jomatsu defends himself. But he is red-faced like a boy caught with his hands in the cookie jar, confirming Hanai's suspicion. They get to the princess's location and search for her. Just then, Hanai hits his leg on something, and when they check, they find out it is the princess's eggshell, which has grown bigger again like Iron Man's ego. Jamastu starts speaking to the princess about finding the Mononokian, but the princess does not answer him. Hanai wonders how they would get the princess to come out of her shell, which is as heavy as Thor's hammer, and proposes to break it, but Jomatsu rejects the idea on the grounds of hurting the princess. Hanai wonders if the princess can hear them, and Jomatsu tells him that she can, so he proceeds to speak to the princess through her shell, proposing that she come out so that they would be able to send her to the underworld. Hanai and Jomatsu argue on the best way to get the princess out of her shell, and Hanai grabs a stone to break the shell, but Jomatsu would not let him. Inside the shell, the princess listens to the racket, and suddenly hears Jomatsu being hit. She breaks the shell and pops up to see that it was a trick Hanai used to get her to come out. Hanai greets her, apologizes for scaring her, and assures her that Jomatsu is fine. When she sees that Jomatsu is fine, she goes back into the shell, and Jomatsu scolds Hanai for his behavior. Hanai then begins telling the princess about Jomatsu's actions and love for her. The princess shows concern for Jomatsu's well-being, and asks him about it. Hanai then whispers to Jomatsu to confess his feelings to the princess, but Jomatsu is too scared to do so. Finally, he summons up courage and tells the princess how he feels about her. The princess flies out of the shell glad that Jomatsu has professed his feeling and reciprocated it. Suddenly, Abeno shows up with a sour look on his face. Hanai introduces the princess to Abeno, who immediately takes a liking to him, making Hanai ask Jomatsu about it, and Jomatsu said that the princess had not exactly committed herself to him, only that she would love to fly around with him. Hanai blames Abeno for making the princess fall in love with him, while Abeno, with his grumpy old man, looks sulks over how the day was not turning as he expected. Abeno summons the Mononokian so that he can change into this exorcism garb for the next job. Asiya wonders how the job would go for Abeno to sulk over it. The Mononokian asks Hanai about the job, but Hanai knows nothing about it, and they wonder what it would be like to work directly with a human client. The boys get to the client's house and are welcomed by the client, a rich, proud girl who is excited about the prospect of the supernatural, but knows nothing about it. She leads them to her room, which she believes is possessed and requests that they exercise the demon in it. 
They see some talisman that she had put on the door, and Abeno removes it in disgust. He opens the door and feels the presence of the yokai in the room. Fuzzy joins him as the girl in her excitement wants to join him inside, but Abeno orders Hanai to stay and keep her occupied. She complained about being shut out of the action, but Hanai tried to explain the delicacy of the situation to her. The client barrages him with questions on exorcism like a parrot on steroids before Hanai shuts her up then asks her about her room and what she had noticed about the strange phenomenon happening in her room. She explains how her room will suddenly start shaking and suggests that it is a poltergeist-like to think of them as a ghost-like gene form, causing the ruckus. When he asks another question, she realizes that he is unaware of the situation and does not answer him again, complaining about being left with the sidekick. Just then, her mother shows up, asking to know who he is. The client tries to explain to her mother, but her mother is not enthusiastic about hiring the boys. She scolds the girl for hiring them and wasting her money, but she defends herself, saying it is her allowance and that the guys are legit. The mother and the daughter argue about who happens to be correct before Hanai interrupts them, and they go to the living room. Hanai and the client's mother sit down to discuss the logic of the yokai. The mother doesn't accept that they exist as they don't have a scientific basis. She asks about Hanai's age and class, then criticizes their choice to battle the supernatural. She accuses them of claiming to have a sixth sense to which Hanai partially agrees. Then she demands that Hanai explain the exorcism process to her. As Hanai tries to break down their work of exercising yokai to the woman, the young bundle of annoyance client cannot hold her curiosity and she goes to check what Abeno is up to. Hanai realizes that he cannot make the woman understand and asks to take his leave. She lets him go after telling him to quit his job. As the client opens the door, the house begins to shake and Hanai leaves the doubting mother to go find out what had happened. He sees the client looking bewildered and the door opens. He reaches there just as Abeno comes out and scolds him for not doing his job. Fuzzy tracks the escaped yokai, and they follow it. Suddenly, the house stops shaking. They go into the drawing room, where the mother waits, and when they tell her they are after the yokai, she does not believe it, and tells them to leave her house. Hanai is angry with her, but Abeno suddenly bows and apologizes for their behavior, and promises to take care of it. The house started shaking again, and the mother agreed to take care of it. They started following the path the yokai was taking as it ran along the house, leaving trails of dark smudges on the wall which only they could see. The yokai runs past the girl into her room, and as she feels something run past her, she turns to go inside, but Abeno stops the annoying girl and scolds her for making his job difficult. They go into the room and see the yokai under the bed. Abeno explains that the yokai is shy of humans and had strayed into the house by accident. The house started shaking as a result of the yokai's emotions running ragged, and Abeno with a people skill as sharp as a bread knife suggests that they wait until the yokai calms down again. Hanai steps forward and starts talking to the yokai to calm it down, telling him of his possession by Fuzz and his reaction to it. He continued to talk about it, making the yokai relax and listen to him. He mentioned how he is no longer scared to see a yokai since he became acquainted with the world of yokai. The yokai relaxes and the house stops talking, surprising Abeno. Hanai then asks him to take over so that he can send the relaxed yokai to the underworld. Abeno opens the gate while Fuzzy becomes acquainted with the yokai. Hanai says his farewell to the yokai which he calls Spiky, and the yokai disappears through the portal. Abeno with the warmth of a snowstorm apologized to the woman again, and suggested returning the fee her daughter paid them for the job. But the cold and scientific hag of a woman refused to take it, and told them that she still did not believe they did anything real in her house. Of course puny humans would never understand the workings of the divine, she then warns them never to come near her daughter again. As they walk away from the house, Fuzzy points out to Abeno that Hanai is mad at something, but he explains that he is just unhappy about the woman's behavior. Abeno explained to him that it is normal to be treated that way, as it is impossible to convince regular humans of things they cannot see or understand. Hanai asks Abeno why he is so calm and not Batman cold, unlike his normal nature, but he assures Hanai that is far from calm, but it makes no difference to him how they behave as long as he gets to exercise the yokai. Hanai is disturbed by their experience with the humans, but Abeno talks to him about how he had come to accept whatever behavior people show as they exercise the yokai. Hanai recalls the conversation with the legislator in the underworld where he had been asked if he was willing to give himself in service to the yokai. He figures that Abeno has already crossed that line where he cares what people say about his choice to serve the yokai. Hanai plays with Fuzzy and thinks about his experience with the woman, while Abeno recalls the words of Mitsuchigura, who had warned him of the Hanai, and he concurs because of Hanai's growing attachment to the yokai. 
Just then, Hanai receives a call from Zenko, requesting that they come to help Yahiko, who is in danger. They agree, and head to the temple to check on Yahiko. They are surprised to find her father at the door when they ring, and Hanai looks with fear that he might hurt him. Zenko is glad that they made it in time to help Yahiko, while a yokai celebrates in a field nearby. The boys meet Zenko's dad at the door, who is angry with Hanai, thinking he is going out with his daughter. Zenko shows up and rescues the boys from her father, welcoming them into their home to her father's surprise. She threatens to tell her mother if he continues to harass her new friends, then leads the boys to Yahiko, who is in a difficult position. They are surprised to see that Yahiko has grown to an enormous size and wonder how it happened. Yahiko confessed he had eaten some potatoes he stole. Zenko brought out a bag of potatoes and admitted her father had eaten the potatoes, but he seemed fine. She observed that she does not always see Fuzzy as clearly as she sees Yahiko. When she opens the potatoes, Yahiko starts craving, and even Fuzzy is excited too. But the potatoes have a terrible smell which affects Abino and Han terribly. Yahiko observes that he can detect yokai on the potatoes, and Zenko tells them of the farm close by to where her mom grows the potatoes, so the boys decide to go check it out. Her overbearing father appears behind them, and tells Zenko that he is not happy she is going out with the two boys, as he does not trust them, but she tells her father not to follow them. As they head out, they talk about her father's attitude towards them. She apologizes for his behavior, and for bothering them with Yahiko, but Hanai assures him they are not bothered by her father's behavior. Abeno adds an apology for Yahiko's actions. He says that he is responsible for Yahiko. Hanai teases Abeno for always behaving like a strict grandma, but Abeno mocks him for behaving like a child. They start to argue, but Zenko stops them while hoping that her father would come to like them. They get to the farm and they notice smoke covering a large area of land and a stronger smell coming from the area. They agree that since they are the only ones who see the smoke and perceive the horrible smell, it must be the work of a yokai. Abeno can sense the yokai, but the strong smell in the air is disturbing. Hanai suggests that he go alone to deal with the yokai guy but Abeno assures him that he is okay. They notice Fuzzy playing in the mud on the farm, and Hanai goes to get him out. Fuzzy starts growing bigger, until he is so big that Hanai can't carry him. Abeno then suggested that Zenko wait behind with Fuzzy, while he and Hanai go into the smoky farm to find the yokai, and exercise it. They get into the farm, and Hanai would not stop complaining about the smell, annoying Abeno who had to deal with the smell, as well as Hanai's childish whines about the smell. They hear a sound and follow it when they see a yokai hitting his head with a potato. The yokai introduced himself as Nobu, and they did the same, which excited him. He had some misconceived idea about the master of the Mononokian, and when they tried to explain, he indicated that he did not care. He desires that they exercise him and send him to the underworld, but as he talks about his desire to go to the underworld, he also shares his despair at being unable to leave the farm. His despair is what is causing the pungent smell, but he doesn't even realize it. They ask him about the mud, and he claims he does not know about it, but it keeps him from leaving the farm, and even starts making him hallucinate, which was why he hid his head so that he would lose his memory and no longer hallucinate. Nobu believes he would no longer hallucinate if he is in the underworld, which is why he will be glad to have them send him there. But Abeno explains that he is too disoriented to be able to open a portal to the underworld. Nau starts crying mud as he becomes more distressed. Abeno then suggests they go outside the farm so that he would be able to carry out the exorcism. Nobu is not sure about being able to leave the field, and Hanai tells him they would not let him touch the mud. The boys shoulder Nobu and walk towards the exit, but the smoke becomes stronger and they are completely lost. Abeno cannot even sense Fuzzy, who he had been using to get their position. Nobu becomes more distressed, and Abeno decides to try summoning the portal there. Hanai talks to him about the decision to open the portal there, which distracts him, and he tells him to shut up. Just then, Hanai notices a scarecrow before him, and the smoke clears to reveal a rice field with the scarecrow in the middle of it. He hears Nobu talking and walks towards him but realizes that it is Nobu's hallucination when Nobu passes right through him. He sees Nobu talking and sees a man drop a cigarette on the field, causing it to catch fire. Hanai also sees how Nobu, unable to carry his friend another scarecrow away to safety, saves himself instead. Hanai opens his eyes in the smoky farm as Nobu continues berating himself for failing to save his friend. They observe that Nobu has grown so very large and would not be able to be exercised. Nobu scolds himself and says that his friend is the one causing the mud and smoke to stop him from leaving as a punishment for not saving him. He told them that he had believed their involvement would have helped him, but the resentment from his friends must be so great. He continues to blame himself for the incident, and Hanai tries to console him, 
telling him not to blame himself as he had done his best, but Nobu would not be consoled. Abeno, with his normal aloofness however, blames Nobu for the incident, shocking Hanai, and he tells Nobu that he will not be able to exercise him. Hanai protests, but the serious and uncharming Abeno scolds Hanai and tells him to put himself in Nobu's shoes, asking if he would not accept the same responsibility. Abeno then tells Nobu that he had imprisoned himself because of his guilt. This makes Nobu more distressed and he releases more of the mud. He advises him to decide to leave if he wants to be exercised, then tells Hanai they are leaving. Abeno advises Nobu to do whatever can to get out of the farm, and he would help him, telling him to take his time to build his resolve and come out of the field. Hanai replies to a text from Zenko, who is worried about them telling her they are heading back. Nobu complains about his weakness in dealing with his guilt, and they tell him they will wait for him. Nobu is filled with optimism, and then turns to his friend and shares his feelings over the fire incident. He declares that he is ready to leave and turns away, to start wading in the mud to reach the edge of the farm. Nobu proclaims his desire to keep striving because of the hope the boys had lit in his heart, and then he shares the last word with his friend, admitting his weakness and his pain at losing his friend. He thanked his friend and said goodbye. The boys wait with Zenko and Fuzzy at the edge of the farm for Nobu. And Hanai tells Zenko to go home because of her dad she says she'll wait, as she is very interested in seeing the portal to the underworld. Nobu comes out of the smoke and Hanai goes to meet him glad that he could make it. Nobu thanks him for helping him and hugs him. Zenko points out that the farm is free of the smoke and the smell is gone. Nobu thanks Abeno and requests again that he send him to the underworld. Abeno opens it and Zenko is surprised that it exists. Nobu goes into the portal while thinking of his friend. Two yokai we would later find out to be Okina and Tomori discuss a very important matter. Tomori who is blind requests the help of the Mononokian master to go to the underworld, and Okina pledges to get her message to the master of the Mononokian. Tomori, who can see the future, told Okina to hurry as it was going to rain soon. Hanai tenses with joy as Fuzzy returns to his original shape, while Zenko and Abeno look at him with annoyance. They mock Hanai's behavior, and just then Zenko's overprotective and helicopter parent dad shows up to scold them for staying out so late. Just then he kneels in pain and Hanai runs to help him, but Abeno already knows that it was the annoyance of a fox Yahiko's doing, and tells him to stop it. Yahiko tells Hanai that he is back to his old self and is ready to play, but Hanai teases him, making him sad. Hanai then forcefully carries him off Zenko's dad back, which relieves the man immediately, but is shocked that Hanai seems to be talking to himself. Zenko's dad, who can be a superstition and paranormal enthusiast, tricks Hanai into admitting that he cured his back, and Hanai agrees. Zenko tells Abeno that they should help Hanai, but Abeno only shrugs his shoulders. Zenko then tells her father that Hanai can see spirits, which was how he had saved him. She explains to Abeno that her father fears the supernatural, but believes in them strongly. The man asks Hanai to come work at the temple to handle the exorcism requests the temple keeps having, and Hanai turns to ask Abeno for his help, only to see he has turned his back on them. Yahiko commented on the change in her father's behavior towards Hanai, and she agreed. Just then it started to rain and they all dispersed with the boys returning to the Mononokian. On reaching there, Hanai regrets not bringing an umbrella, and asks the Mononokian to take him home, but the Mononokian teases him. Then the Mononokian alerts them to the presence of an unannounced visitor. Hanai goes to open the door that opens up to the underworld, and he sees a yokai standing there. Abeno welcomes the yokai, and they provide him with towels to dry him up and a cup of tea. Okina apologizes for dropping by unannounced before exchanging pleasantries with Hanai. He tells Hanai his name is Okinagami. When Hanai wonders why he is called a big boss of the land, Okina answers that it was the title he was given by humans. The Mononokian explained that Okina is worshipped by humans, and Hanai asked if he had always lived in the world of humans, to which the yokai replied that he had requested to remain in the world. He then told them about Tomori, who wants to be sent to the underworld. He explained that the yokai who needs the help is blind and would not have been able to come to the Mononokian master on her own. Okina tells them that she can only see when she takes the ability of a human to see yokai to which Abeno shows his displeasure, but Okina assures him that she only wants to be exercised. He adds that the person who grants her the vision would get it back in a few days. Abeno agrees to carry out the exorcism, but Okina suggests that they wait until the skies are clear. Later, Okina leads the boys to Tomori, who is waiting at the mouth of a cave. They get introduced to her, and Abeno suggests they move to a larger space so that he would be able to open up the portal to the underworld. Hanai proposes to help her with her temporary sight, and she realizes that he is a human who can see yokai. She then starts talking about her past, and how she had seen through humans with such ability in the past. Hanai shows interest in helping her while Abeno scowls at the delay. She tells him of many good things she had seen in the human world, and her regret at not being able to see anything again. She expresses her wish to return to the underworld in the hope that she regains her sight, Hanai turns to see the sour-faced Abino, frowning, but he still goes ahead with his plan. He asks Tomori if she wishes to see the world one more time, and she apologizes for implying it by her words of regret. 
and hope. Hanai assures her that he offered because he would have regretted it later if she had gone to the underworld without him making his offering. He adds that he is willing to make the sacrifice of his ability to see yokai so that she may go to the underworld without regret. He turns to Abano for approval or disapproval, but Abano is just as cold as Antarctica, and Tamori agrees that she is interested in seeing the world one more time. Tamori carries out the ritual and Hanai opens his eyes to see just Hanai standing there. He asks about the yokai and Abano assures him that they are okay. Abino then tells him to go home as he would only get in his way with the loss of his ability, although Hanai protests the harshness he goes home anyway. Tamori is glad that she can now see and takes in the sight of the mundane world one last time. She tells Abeno to convey her gratitude to Hanai. Hanai arrives home looking sullen, and his mom wonders why he looks so dejected. He mentions how he misses the ability, but he is okay as long as it is a few days. The third day, he heads to school with excitement, which shocks his mom at his changing mood. Hanai gets to school and sees Abeno there before him. He comments on his early arrival and the hope of his returning ability. Abeno says it is not back yet, as Hanai cannot see Fuzzy who is on him. This is worse than heartbreak from a loved one. The fifth day after he loses his ability, Abeno checks his ability to sense the yokai, but he fails the test, and Hanai despairs. Abeno tells him that he is fired as he is useless to the Mononokian the way he is. Hanai in anger throws his shoe at Abeno, but he dodges it, and the shoe hits Yahiko, who is there with Abeno. He expresses his disappointment at Abeno's decision, and promises that he will get his ability back, and that Abeno will beg him to come back to work for him. Yahiko goes back to Zenko's place and sits scowling and when she meets him, he tells her of Hanai's predicament and his displeasure at Hanai, throwing his shoe at him. Meanwhile, Hanai also sits sad. Before his friends Saga and Fushi meet him, they show concern for him and advise him to get a new job or join a club. Hanai thinks about his life and wonders if he would be able to do something as mundane as what they are suggesting after his encounters with the yokai. Every day, Hanai looks with expectation towards Abano's desk. But Abano refuses to come to school, and he worries about what has happened to him. Abano, on the other hand, confers with the Mononokian before going to the underworld. He goes to the Kiyakudo to get some medicine and broods when Kora and Shizuku ask after Hanai. Abano decides to go see the legislator and takes his leave of Kora and Shizuku. The legislator welcomes Abano, and he tells the legislator that he has fired Hanai. The legislator acknowledges that he is operating under his authority as the master of the Mononokian. Abano wants to leave after delivering his message, but the legislator demands to know everything. Abeno confirms that Hanai had lost his ability to see yokai and is no longer of any use to the Mononokian. The legislator mentioned that he heard Hanai lost his ability by rendering help to a yokai. Abeno defended his decision, but the legislator reminded him of a statement he made some time ago on how he would not fire Hanai unless the legislator made it a rule. The legislator asks him if he regretted hiring Hanai, which upsets Abeno as the legislator had seen through him. Abeno replies that Hanai has strong feelings for the yokai and it cost him his ability. The legislator teases him about how he hides his care for Hanai in his cold, grumpy, and magneto-like nature. He adds that Hanai has a right to determine if he wants to remain or to move on. Abeno replies that he made his decision as the master of the Mononokian, and the legislator did not dispute him, but asks after Hanai's family. The legislator wonders if Abeno had hired Hanai after considering his name. Abeno answers that since Hanai has lost his ability, he will become a burden to him, so it had been best to let him go. Abeno calls up the Mononokian to go home, but the legislator stops him when he gets a call from Shizuku, asking for Abeno. At school, Hanai wonders about the whereabouts of Abeno before he is joined by Saga and Fushi, and they decide to go take some pictures. Hanai takes some great shots and Fushi compliments him, telling him to try more as he heads home. On his way home, Hanai keeps taking shots, and when he gets to the path he first meets Fuzzy, he sighs in regret, and suddenly the dwarfish Zenko pops up behind him which scares him. She shows her concern for him losing his ability to see yokai, but suggests that he let Yahiko bite him. Maybe it would restore his ability as receiving a bite from Yahiko had made it possible for her to see yokai. The prospect excites Hanai, and he runs towards her house. They reach there and meet her father at the door. The overprotective, religious fanatic is excited to see Hanai, welcomes him, and gives him tea. He expresses his wish to begin the exorcism business and demands that Hanai help him with it. Hanai tries to explain that he had lost the ability to see yokai, but the man insists that they work together. Zenko had to come to save Hanai from her father. She threatens her father before taking Hanai to Yahiko, who is not interested in helping Hanai because he had hit him with his shoe. After a bribe, Yahiko decides to help him and bites him, but there is no change in Hanai and Zenko apologizes for raising his hopes. Shizuku meets with Abeno to tell him he has a visitor at the Kiyakudo. 
They get back together to see the screeching yokai and his children waiting for him. They exchange pleasantries and the screeching yokai expresses his wish to extend this gratitude to Hanai. Abeno tells him that Hanai should get the whole credit for saving him. Kura notices something wrong and tries to get rid of Shizuku. She thanks her assistant for her service and sends her home. Once Shizuku is out of the way, she queries Abeno about his mood. Abeno understands her reason for sending Shizuku home and informs her suspicion of Hanai losing his ability to see Yokai. The screeching boss Yokai asks if nothing can be done and Kura says it is out of her league. He then suggests that Abeno seek out Tamori and ask about it. Abeno does not want the Yokai to trouble themselves, but the screeching boss boss decides to find her on his own. The stubborn Abeno protests that Hanai no longer works for the Mononokian, but the Yokai insists, and Kura chides Abeno for his stubbornness telling him to accept the help. He eventually agrees, and they go. But the boss Yokai requests that he remain at the Kiyakudo until he gets back. The screeching Yokai asks around the underworld for the whereabouts of Tamori, and meets up with several of the Yokai that Hanai had helped. Kura advised Abeno about his refusal to get help from the yokai. She let him know that the rare action of the yokai is fueled by Hanai and Abeno's devotion to the yokai. Just then, the screeching yokai returned and shared the result of their search. They had returned with all the yokai that Hanai had helped, all of whom were willing to help him. Abeno meets with Tamori and tells her about the situation. She expresses her regret at taking up Hanai's offer and tells Abeno that it has never been like that. She suggests that Hanai himself might be responsible for the delay in getting his ability back due to his strong feelings for the yokai and his determination that she has no regret. She tells Abeno that if Hanai persists in subconscious conviction, he might lose his ability permanently. Tamori blames herself for the situation, but Abeno tells her not to feel that way saying that he would do his best to make sure that Hanai regains his sight. Abeno wonders how he would fix the situation. He was about to return to the Mononokian before he had a flash of revelation and decided to stay back in the underworld to begin his plan to help Hanai. Meanwhile, Zenko sees Hanai off. She tells him not to lose hope as he leaves and Yahiko asks why she did not tell the blind idiot that Buzzy is him. Abeno returns from the underworld and goes to see Okina, and after Yahiko whines about his mistreatment by Hanai, Okina finds out that Hanai hasn't gotten back his sight. Okina wonders what went wrong saying that Tamori would never have lied to Hanai. Abeno agrees with him and tells him not to worry about it as he believes the whole thing would be sorted out soon. Yahiko spills out Abeno's recent trip to the underworld and how he had asked Tamori about it, making Abeno scold him silently. Okina asks Tamori's opinion about it and Abeno tells him that Tamori had said the time it takes to return varies between individuals. They discuss the cause of Hanai's delay and Abeno tells him that he has a plan to fix Hanai's disability. He makes a deal with Yahiko so that Yahiko would help him with his plans. At school, Hanai is more worried than a father whose daughter goes to the Red District for the first time, spaced out in class as he worries about Abeno, and the teacher calls him to order. The teacher asked if he would like to go to the nurse's office which made the class mock Hanai. Of course, his problem is bigger than going to the nurse's office. After school, Hanai walks with his friends before encountering Zenko who wants to speak with him. She tells Hanai that Yahiko had gone on a mission with Abeno, and she has not heard from him since then. Hanai worries about Fuzzy getting along with Yahiko without realizing that Fuzzy is right there with him. Zenko looks at him weirdly and asks about his ability. He replies that he is starting to lose hope and wants to give up. Zenko added that Yahiko had mentioned going to a shrine making Hanai wonder if it was Okina's shrine they were talking about. As he walks down the corridor, he starts to feel a certain presence. He enters an empty room and sees nothing but does not know that the screeching boss, Yokai, is in the room. He walks home dejected, his mind filled with thoughts about the Yokai and his experiences with them. He tries to read at home but he is too distracted and keeps thinking about all the Yokai he has helped. The next day, he walks toward Okina's shrine and continues to sense several unnatural things. He even catches himself laughing without cause and wonders if he is going crazy, not knowing that the laughing mask has been placed on his face. He gets to the shrine and calls out to Abeno and Yahiko, but receives no answer. He tries to look around and sees a leaf hanging in the air. Hanai wonders if he has gotten his ability back. The leaf walks into the temple, and he follows it inside, seeing the Mononokian's crest on the wall inside the shrine. The door closes, and he starts to panic. He sees a skull hanging in the air and asks if it is Okina. Hanai, who is more afraid of his own shadow than Peter Pan, panics and his fear increases and he starts to ramble. He continues to feel some presence around him. He curls up in fear and starts thinking about his weakness. He scolds himself for his fear and tries to encourage himself. He observes that the presence around him is not hostile but warm and kind. Suddenly he feels a tug behind him. He turns to see a hand jutting out of the wall and he passes out in fear. The yokai surround the scaredy cat, Hanai, and discuss waking him up and Fuzzy is asked to do the honor of waking him up. Hanai feels the presence of Fuzzy while he still feels sleepy. The morose and stoic Abeno kicks him up, 
and he sees everybody around him. He greets all the yokai, and finally Abeno. The yokai tell him that they had come to help him or his ability as that is what friends are for. They show their concern for him, and he starts to fuss over his precious sidekick Fuzzy. He notices Yahiko with the skull mask, and scolds him for teasing him. But Abeno tells him that it is his idea. Hanai asks how he had come to get his ability returned. Abeno explained how he had first gotten the ability from his reaction to encountering Fuzzy and the care he showed the yokai. He told him that he needed a trigger to help him return his ability, and had to bring the yokai together so that their collective feelings plus the strong emotions Hanai holds for them would help him get his sight back. He adds that the yokai had strong feelings for Hanai, which was why he was able to get his sight back. The yokai let him know that they had been with him all day. Abeno teases him because of his weird attraction to the yokai, and Hanai retorted that Abeno is the same. Abeno apologized to the yokai for making them help him, and then summoned the portal to the underworld so that they could return. Hanai thanked them all for their help, and they asked that he come visit them later. Hanai asked about a hand he saw, and Abeno assured him it was not a ghost hand, but rather his own, when he had opened the door from the Mononokian to the shrine. Abeno then asked why he had come to the shrine and Hanai explained that he had been worried as Abeno had not been in school since. Yahiko was about to spill Abeno's involvement in helping Hanai get his sight back, but Abeno stopped him. Okina whispers it to Hanai as Yahiko distracts Abeno. Hanai is glad that Abeno arranges the entire thing. Hanai then apologizes for throwing his shoes, but the fun-loving and attention-seeking fox Yokai Yahiko tells him that he was the one who got hit with the shoe and asks for a treat to compensate him. The tough and morose boss, Abeno bowed his head and apologized to his idiotic excuse of an employee that he is starting to care for Hanai for his attitude towards him the past few days, and requested that he come back to the Mononokian. Hanai is embarrassed by the gesture, and bows deeply before accepting the offer. They go back to the Mononokian, and Hanai is told that Fuzzy had been with him the entire time he had been without his ability to see Yokai. He apologizes to Fuzzy who accepts and communicates through the help of the Mononokian that they play. Hanai agrees and they go outside to play. Abeno and the Mononokian talk about the past, and Abeno worries about the Mononokian having a human master. They talk about the naive but amiable and Yokai-loving Hanai and they both show that they are glad that Hanai is back with them. Abeno then joins Hanai outside as he plays with Fuzzy. 